it is time. So you might be wondering what the hell, what the heck is this video? What's the point of this video? Well, I decided to try something new where we're gonna do some building, live building, well not really live, but like real time building while we talk about stuff. So I'm building crap while talking crap. So if you guys enjoyed what you what this video is gonna be about, if you guys like it, then we'll do it again because I got another set. So I'll be doing two of them, and if they're well, well received, then we'll continue doing more videos like this. But let's kick start today's video. Well, because this is the first time, if you don't like it and you want to skip away, feel free. This is just something new that I want to test out, you know. So judging by you by the title and the thumbnail that you've seen, we're building this today. Inferno XL from LEGO Hero Factory Brain Attack. Now you may be wondering, Mark 45, don't you already have one? Yes, I do. Not anymore, because I actually had to, um, I lost it. Or not exactly lost it, well, the cape ripped and a lot of pieces were scratched and broken because I had that Inferno XL for so many years now. And when I was little, I was the most irresponsible kid possible. So I damaged it. It's it's a total loss. Doesn't mean I can salvage. I can't salvage the parts for other stuff. Of course, I am going to salvage the parts for other uses. Potentially sell them on Bricklink or something like that. But thanks to a fan who donated me a brand new sealed copy of Inferno XL, I decided to. To do this in honor of you buddy so for, for the person who donated this you know who you are um, I'm gonna build this just for you so not only did I replace my Pyrox I have a brand new Pyrox the villain of Inferno XL supposed to combat this is my new copy because my old one I gave to my little cousin for my birthday because of the missing armor piece so not only do I have a new Pyrox, but I'm also going to get a new Inferno XL. So I'm completely replacing my Inferno XL and Pyrox duel. Then again, I'm trying to fix my Hero Factory collection. Any figures that I had that are just like wearing out and old that I'm throwing it, or not throwing out, but I'm replacing it. The next one I'm going to do will be Stormer XL from Breakout Hero Factory. And like I said, if this is well received, then we will do it. So Inferno XL. Um, if you've seen the the individual review, then uh, I will leave the link to the review in the description. This is not a review. This is just a build. We're just gonna build the figure. I will give my thoughts and everything in the review that I made many many months ago. So you're gonna you go check that instead. Um, but you also notice in that review I posted or I included clips of when I was a little kid. Un unboxing or unbagging in this case this very very same set so if you want to do like a comparison feel free but I'm not gonna include clips here but definitely is like my childhood experience from seven years ago and I'm reliving it today in 2020 so this provides lots of nostalgia also this dark saber that I had um, Toys R Us donated it to me <laughs> so uh, this is not it doesn't serve any purpose in this video, but I really really like this sword and I don't know why I'm just all right. I'm gonna put it away <laughs> Okie dokie, so let's get on with the objective of this video So as you know all the hero factory sets came in bags and um, this one The XL heroes usually came in boxes uh, Stormer XL and Rock XL, but in this case Ferno XL here also came in in a bag as well so it was interesting to see lego make that change and also the fact that the other set in brain attack that came in a big bag was dragon bolt so like i said in this video we are building it so let's actually get this let's crack this bag open and see what's just start building so random so in terms of what to talk about well we can talk about my history of hero factory what my favorite heroes are all sorts of things. You guys can leave comments down for a topic for the next time we build Stormer XL. So, be my guest. Anyways, let's get started. Before that, let's open the, let's show you the bag in case you need a refresher. So, I can't, here it is. It is set 
44000 with 103 pieces. There's that. And then here's the back of the bag. Showing you that he has a combination model with Pyrox. Which is right here. I put Pyrox here. Actually, you know, I'm going to put Pyrox on the side. But I love, I'll put him out here just for the sake of the display. And then he does include a thousand game points on the non-existent game anymore. <laughs> that doesn't exist anymore on herofactory.lego.com. But obviously it's useless now. So let's crack this open with the scissors and see what's inside. Now, you know, if you've watched my videos enough, that I do not open from the top because this will destroy the beautiful artwork of the bag. That's why I don't really, I wasn't a big fan of these sets and bags. I open it from the bottom because the bottom's empty, it's useless, and I believe it's much easier to cut out and preserve the bag. So let's do exactly just so. If you think I'm weird, I have a reason for doing that. So don't say I'm weird. This is great ASMR, especially with the mic right beside me. You're gonna hear the scrumptious of the bag and the pieces within it. Let's get it. All right, snip this boy right open. I don't know why, but the smell is satisfying. I know I'm weird, but there's something about a fresh, the smell of a fresh, just opened Hero Factory bag. So here's the torso, the extra large one. This is not a proper review, by the way, so we're just building. So technically, if you want to see a full review experience, you can watch this video and then watch the review because we're building it. And it's not a speed build, it's a real-time build. So this build will take like 20 minutes or something. Here's his uh, chest armor or body armor in that color or in uh, light silver color, I believe. And then this is his cape. Look at that, the cape is nicely put in this plastic bag. <laughs> a few years ago when I did this review, this is the exact same set, I freaked out over this cape. I was like, oh my god, oh no, I was like, awesome, or something like that. I don't even remember, but I definitely freaked out over this fabric cape, what even. And then... this out here we have a bag of normal parts or quote-unquote normal parts then we've got his blade for the sword for his the blade for his sword and then a bag of smaller parts and then the very much folded up instruction book <laughs> if I can get it out that would be great yeah there we go See, now I've saved the bag from it being disposed and broken. All right, let's get building. So, obviously I won't analyze the parts like normal. This is literally the exact same instruction book. I've always seen it. I uh, guess, I've se you know, I think at this point I'll just leave um, um, a card or the link to the entire Brain Attack playlist just for you guys. Here's the combination motto between him and Pyrox in case you weren't clear the first time. Now you should be clear. So, let's get these open. Oh yeah. That looks is what I expected. So, let's talk about my past with Hero Factory. So, as you know, Hero Factory has been around since 2010 and is the backbone of this channel. As you know, the I've started this channel because of um, Hero Factory. The name I got is actually from Surge because, well, his first name was Mark. Mark Surge, to be specific. And so, the 45 I got it from a Hero Factory channel I used to watch called William Ferno Studios. Studios. And in his user, he always uses the number 45. And then that's where I got it. Mark 45. That's how I assembled my name. I've said the story way, way too many times. But not everyone watches every single one of my videos. So, 
That's why it's a must. So, there's that. Here's a cape though. The cape is nicely folded. I will say that. I, I I do I do very much appreciate the way it's put. Now we just unfold it. Look at that. This is high quality material. I can never get over the fact that Lego can make something like this so high quality for an action figure. You know, the last time we had something like this was Bionico. So, and then later on we had them in Star Wars, which was even better. So that's the cape. We have all the parts. We can begin assembling. Starting off with the torso. So, like I said, um, my first ever Hero Factory figure was XT4 from uh, Breakout. Um, he wasn't one of the well-received villains. Not a lot of people liked him. He, there was definitely much better villains, but that time, you know, hey, I was a little kid. And he said that I got, I was really happy with. So, definitely, I, I very much... I think I got him from like a toy store. I think that was the first time I was exposed to Hero Factory. And from there, I was like, damn, this is a great series. Is there any more of these? And then I just went on from there. Um, there I remember one memory I have of Hero Factory definitely was when... Um, I think it was Winners, which if you're outside of Canada, I don't know if you know what that store is, but it's basically a discount store where... They resell a bunch of other crap they bought, and it can vary from time to time. You never, you can never go to Walmart and expect something. There's always stuff there that you don't even know it's there until you get to the store yourself. So, one, I think at some point in 2013 or just some point during my time, uh, Winter starts selling Hero Factory sets. All of all Winter stores throughout uh, Vancouver, and. It was great for me, because I was just getting into Hero Factory, so I was getting. It was a it was a win, and they they but they were very very specific in the sets they were selling. They were specifically selling Breakout Wave Two things, Wave Two, not Wave One. So I was like, yeah, that's great. That's and that's also how I got Next, because I was like, well, I have XT4, I might as well get Next. I've also got my Stringer from Winners. My, um, let me think. I think there was another one. My Stormer XL, my old Stormer XL, and my Speed Demon I also got from Winners. And yeah, it was from there. I also saw Bulk, they have Breakout Bulk. But then back then, you know, parents are like, ah, I can only pick one, you can't buy both. So I picked Stringer over Bulk. Don't know if I regretted that decision or not. I don't think I regret that decision. I mean, later on in 2020, today, I have every single set, but like back then I was like, I had to choose between Stringer or Bulk. I think I made a better choice by choosing Stringer, so it wasn't that bad. But I did have Voltix. I did I did look because my friend Darren, you probably know him a lot, appears on the channel a lot. He got Voltix and I asked him where he copped it. He said he got it from Superstore, so we went to Superstore and there was nothing. No not in stock. So either Darren just got lucky and bought the last one, or there was just not in the first place, and he must have remembered the wrong store or something. I'm not saying he lied, but he might have just missed, he might have just forgotten himself. So there's that. That is the legs we are now assembling. So we finished the structure for the body, which is mostly the Technic pins, and yeah, a bunch of the. Extenders. Now what we're gonna do, now what we're doing is assembling his legs using friction adders. See, in the past, before friction adders were a thing, they had this thing called double jointing. And double jointing, yes, it provided more friction, but obviously it used a lot more pieces, and therefore it upped the price by a lot. So I'm glad with the new with the friction adders, they were able to reduce the number of parts and provide lots of resistance for heavy figures to still strike some cool poses. So thank God for the invention of friction adders. Glad glad they came to be, you know. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is put the number five red armor piece on here. The other one should be right here. There it is. Look at that. Beautiful. Let me put that right on. Oh wait, I forgot. I forgot to add the friction adders on top here. There we go. I know there could have been a better camera angle to look at this, but 
I want to get my face in here too, you know? Instead of just purely my hands, but... By the way, thank you for- thank you so much for, um... Uh, for the support on the Hero Factory reviews, because they were quite expensive. And, uh... Especially because I was buying them in 2020 when the theme is retired. It did cost me a lot. And it cost me a total of like 10... I think it was... Seven grand or something like that. Point is, it was expensive. So, there's that. All right, so this is the basic structure. You can see how tall it is if I put it right next to Pyrox. You can really see it's a tall boy. Oh, excuse me. All right, we're now going to assemble the back part of him, which will then, um, which is the support for his cape. And these are using these technical lift arms. Honestly. Um, for I think I mentioned this before. I said Ferno Excel was my all-time favorite Hero Factory figure ever. That still stands today, cause I don't know. He just looks perfect. No flaws with him, though. I mean, there were worse than flaws, but in terms of the XL heroes, I wasn't like Storm XL was good, but I wasn't too much of a fan of it. I did wish Storm XL had like had. A little more complexity, like Ferno XL, but yeah, Rocka XL was good too. I, I liked Rocka XL because I don't know, there was something about him that made really made him look like a true XL. I feel like this one's kind of a downgrade, even though he is an XL hero, or as we call Bionicle folks call it the Titan heroes. He still is on the taller side, but he's not as big as and, and complex as Rock XL, you know what I'm saying? You, you know where I'm going at here, right? So we have this now. We have this basic structure. And now... Ah, so it's cape time. Alright, it's cape time. Okay, so to attach the cape, some of you have asked me before in the comments on the review that I did of this guy, how did you attach the cape? Well, I did show in the review, but I might as well show you in the build process right now. You do this, you need these, these will lock the cape in place. And I just realized that you gotta attach these pieces. My bad. There we go. And then the other piece should be right here. Brilliant. 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 <laughs> Okay, and then we take the cape, then we attach it right here, just like that, and then we do this, just like that, and then we take the Technic pins to lock it in place right after, so let me, so the cape is pretty well secured, you know, in terms of it, Collapsing chances of it happening is Really low unless of course you uh, you start ripping up the cape pulling in it really hard But yeah, and now we lock it in place with these Technic pins now um, Do I so which hero factory theme is my favorite? Um, I, I never really talked about it in the reviews. I guess my favorite one still has to be a savage planet with this one, Brain Attack being number two. Breakout was good. Ordeal of Fire was meh. Invasion from Below, I was not a big fan of it whatsoever. Guess I wasn't. I preferred the big action figures. I don't know why Hero Factory Lego decided to scale Hero Factory back to minifigure size sets. I mean, it had the Pacific Rim vibe, but still, like. How did they go from- how did Ferno go from this XL to a minifigure driving a flying fire mech? That's my question. Kind of wish- because then that threw off the entire story, right? So... That was the case. And now... I don't know. I do have very, very much mixed feelings about the franchise, because... It never lived- it never saw the full- it never saw its full potential. I believe the way it continued this franchise instead of bringing back Bionicle and doing Star Wars buildable figures, I could have reached its peak potential. It was it was getting somewhere. 
in since ever since Breakout was a thing. It was it was really getting somewhere, but then Lego stopped it. And then once they introduced Invasion from Below, it kind of all went downhill. And then the theme ended, unfortunately. Like they shouldn't. Yeah, I feel like in, they, Lego just didn't manage. They didn't manage the the friend the theme all too well. But I I guess they had other priorities. Because one of the reasons they retired Hero Factory was because they were want they weren't wanting to focus more on licensed uh, themes like Star Wars. It was also why they they wanted to retire Ninjago, but obviously, as you probably heard, the fan base lashed back. Was they were not happy with it being with it ending, so Lego brought it back only because of pressure from the fans. Writing lots of complaining emails, death threats, and everything. Just people weren't happy that Ninjago was ending. And back then, Lego was also getting started with Chima, which, if you want my personal opinion, was not a successful theme. I'm glad they- that was a theme that I, I'm glad that they've ended. A theme that, I'm gl that I wish they continued is Hero Factory. Honestly, Hero Factory had so much potential. Like, they, 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 it, it looked really promising in the beginning, but Lego just couldn't manage it well, and that's where it ultimately failed. Like, look at these sets, especially this one, Inferno XL. They're actually good sets. Just real. I just wish they would continue doing sets like this. If the designers put more care and attention, then that would be that would be great. All right, it's time to assemble the the core. The hero core or the core clamps. As you probably know, these were the new meta for Brain Attack, these core clamps. Which I think would have been great for Bulk in Breakout because, as you know, the villain he was assigned to recapture was Core Hunter. And Core Hunter is one of the most dangerous villains ever because, hence the name, he's a serial killer. He rips out hero cores. And. These would have the core clamps here would have come perfectly in handy. Would have protect Bulk's hero core nice and well from Core Hunter. So, like I said, another mismanagement of the lore. Uh, a lot of some people didn't like the core clamps. They thought it looked weird on them. I personally think they look fine. And in fact. You gotta do what you gotta do to protect your hero core. It's literally like your your soul, your spirit, right? Your living thing. So, all right, here's what it looks like. Let's attach it. So yeah, of course the game code is on the hero core, which is useless now. All right, time to assemble his head. So, uh, Ferno XL has a pretty interesting mask, but without the visor, it does look kind of stupid. I'm not gonna lie. So, speaking of visor, let's take the visor and attach that bad boy right on. And, boom. That's his head. Let's put that right on him. There we go. Absolutely beautiful. This is... One of my favorite features of Ferno XL is the chest armor, which gives him that extra medieval armor warrior look. That's that is what's really cool about him. So we simply do this. Attach this on the side, and you just secure it. Boom, like that. And that gives him not only the extra the extra buff, but it, he just looks cooler, and it gives him extra protection. It, he just it just looks awesome, you know. All right, let's put the figure aside. Got a simple sword now. So how does this work? I, I don't know. I don't know why I'm struggling with this because I have I had this figure before. It's just a new copy for me. But I don't know. All right. Take this. So his sword is one of the coolest swords I've ever seen in Hero Factory history. It's a flaming fire sword and 
It's just the way it's just designed, the way it's built, it's just absolutely awesome. I'm a very I'm very much of a big fan of it. Obviously, I explain more in the review. And speaking of the review, of course, um, I did the I had my old Pyrox for the review, so I have the missing armor piece. But now, as you can see, I have a new Pyrox, a fresh new version of Pyrox, that of course, obviously has the I got the armor piece back because it's a new copy. Obviously, I won't refilm the entire review just for the sake of that armor piece, because there's no point. But yeah, that's that's just, that's just the case. Um, I did build the Pyrox off camera. I did wish I now I kind of wish I filmed the let's build crap and talk crap earlier, but oh well. I didn't have the idea back then. Not until now. But we have Pyrox here just for the sake of company and because he goes with Verno XL. I love how the sword uses the uh, uh, number three transparent armor piece. That That is what I appreciate about it. It's just how big they've made the sword. That is that is cool. All right, so that's that goes on his left hand. Just like that. Beautiful. Now, next up, we're going to assemble his fire shield. Another cool thing about him. So we put that in. Then we take this piece. Notice uh, it's actually not a lot of pieces left, so not bad for a XL figure compared to Rock XL and Witch Doctor. Holy crap, Witch Doctor, man! You should have seen how many pieces there. Are. Like obviously, if you see the review, you know what I'm talking about. And if you have the set yourself, then you obviously know what I'm talking about. But he was a he was an actual nightmare to build. Like I know building's supposed to be fun. The Witch Doctor wasn't fun, it was, an, it was an actual nightmare, but all the technic parts of the ball sockets, it was not just snap snap snap, it was making sure everything was perfectly aligned and stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, Witch Doctor, man. But this one, despite Inferno being a big hero, is not, all, is not all too complicated, which is good. So now with the shield, the last thing we're going to do is to put the fire flame pieces right on here. To give it the look, boom, just like that. How cool does that look? Let me just put that right on here. There we go. The last job is to now put these leg armor right on the bottom so he doesn't look all that stupid. So, there we go. That's our brand new copy, brand new version. Of Ferno, I mean, it's not a new version, but it's just, yeah, it's a new copy of Ferno Excel. In terms of leftovers, we have a single Technic pin, single of this, and a single claw. From that, everything else is assembled. So, here he is, the brand, or yeah, my brand new version of Ferno Excel. Like I said, this is the first episode of Let's Build Crap and Talk Crap. Next up, we're going to do Stormer Excel. And then maybe I'll do something else other than Hero Factory. But this is the start, so there you go, what do you think? I have a new copy of Inferno XL and a new copy of Pyrox. Completely replaced my old set. My old I have both I had both of these, but my old versions are obviously not here anymore. So if you enjoyed this series, it is a little long, but if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and tell me what you think. Then next time we'll do more. Like I said, next time I'll do Stormer Excel. So, we'll see you then.